What is up, my friends, and welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I'm your host, Mark Perry, editor of XFL News Hub. And on this week's show, we've got a rundown of the latest player transactions, some stuff going on in St. Louis, and your social media stuff. Very kind of quiet week. First of all, we want to congratulate Donald Parham for getting a second touchdown in the season. I think he's two catches, two touchdowns. I think that's about it. And Sergio Garcia kicking a field goal for the New York Jets. We have the latest player transactions, and let's get into that right now. Roughnecks kicker Sergio Garcia started for the Jets, and he also kicked a field goal. That's right, Sergio Garcia, congratulations to him, kicking a field goal in this weekend's Jets-Buffalo Bills game. The Jets lost again. Kenny Robinson moved from the Panthers practice squad to the active roster this past weekend. Battle Hawks defensive end Will Clark signed with the New Orleans Saints. He's part of their practice squad. Battle Hawks wide receiver DeMornay Pearson L. He was released by the Raiders practice squad again. I'm sure he might be signed again and then released again. Roughnecks defensive tackle Walter Palmore. He signed with the Dallas practice squad this week. All right, there you have the latest player transactions. So how do you get in touch with the show? Email podcast at XFL News Hub with your MP3s or your videos, or you call 888-430-7692, extension 3. Remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts so we can read it on the show. We're so thankful for that. those that do that. In this week's show, first we wanted to mention that the Spring League kicks off on the 27th. FS1, 8 p.m., we'll have your first game We'll check that out. Stay tuned to XFL News Hub for a recap of everything that went down with the Spring League. There's a lot of former XFL players in the Spring League as well as coaches. So you're going to want to check that out, all our coverage on XFL News Hub. So that's FS1, October 27th is your first game. So check it out, DVR it, TiVo it for those. Is even TiVo a thing anymore? I don't even know if it exists anymore. What a market that they could have had. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my. All right, so without further ado, folks, let's just get into the week that was the XFL. It looks like discussions with the Battle Hawks returning to St. Louis is starting to heat up. We've slowly gotten some information about the XFL relaunch in 2020. We found out the new owners, the launch date, et cetera, et cetera. And now there's word that out of St. Louis that the St. Louis Post-Dispatch put out there. There's been conversations between the XFL and the St. Louis Convention and Visitors Commission to discuss using the Dome again. According to President Kitty Ratcliffe, quote, we talked with them a couple weeks ago and they just reached out today to schedule another call. She went on to say what they were doing with their first call is they were contacting each one of the previous venues just to let them know that the new ownership intends to restart in 2022. It's good to know. It was a very positive experience for St. Louis. So I hope that they do bring it back. Close quote. If you look at her more comments, it's not just St. Louis that these conversations have occurred with. Fans may have assumed that the teams, venues, and everything else would stay the same, but nothing was or is guaranteed. There may be other issues that come up with venues, but the XFL is checking in with the previous ven- venues. By doing that, it's a encouraging sign. Ratliff Clint went on to say, quote, I think it was clear to everybody that we were, if not the top, we were one of the top two cities that performed for the XFL, and they had a great experience in the Dome. So I think their initial calls were simply to touch base with all the venues and see if there was going to be any resistance to future conversations or not. And we indicated to them that we'd be happy to have future conversations. That was really the extent of it, so not much to report. We're still in the bankruptcy hearing, so all are all of the other XFL venues with that company. Close quote. So her comments basically mean that they're interested, but the people are starting to talk, and this is a good sign. And if they're going to play in the Dome, a new lease will have to be renegotiated since The Rock, Danny Garcia, Redbird Capital Partners have taken over from Vince McMahon. The previous lease was for $100,000 a game. Not sure what will go on this go-around. Ratliff went on to say, quote, I can't speak for the community, but I can speak for the CVC team. I know our team would love to see the Battle Hawks back, and I think that the community would also. 
So we'll keep our fingers crossed that something positive can move forward. You know, they have to restart a whole league. It's not about one city or one venue. It's about making a business plan for an entire league work. So I think that will probably will take them a bit of time. And that's the key that we need to see as XFL fans. It's going to take time, my friends. The Battle Hawks and the Dome were a great mix, if not the top draw, as them and and Seattle. They would be crazy not to go back to St. Louis. I'm excited to hear that they're starting talks to crank up the Battle Hawks. Hopefully, we can get some things done maybe before the end of the year. But St. Louis fans, this is another good sign that your Battle Hawks team is going to return. What's up, XFL Army? If you're a fan of the XFL News Hub and you have a telephone, which I know all of you do because you're sitting there playing on your phones all the time, then why not download the XFL News Hub app? That's right, it's on iTunes. It's on Android. We have an Android version and an iPhone version of the XFL News Hub app. So what do you get? You get the latest news from XFL News Hub, the premier source of XFL news in the universe. Plus, you get push notifications when we have breaking news. You be the first to know. You can leave a comment on some of the news right from your phone. Plus, you get this podcast on your phone as well. Remember, you can leave us reviews on the Google Play Store or iTunes. It links to other social media, our other social media accounts, and so much more. Be in the know. I know you're on your phones. People are on their phones all the time. They never get off their phones. So why not just download the XFL News Hub app on your Android or iPhone today? All you need to do is go to the Google Play Store or iTunes and just type in XFL News Hub. That's XFL News Hub. Download our app on your phone today. Let's check in with some of our social media stuff. First of all, congrats to former Houston Roughnecks kicker Sergio Garcia on kicking a field goal for the Jets. Seth said Sergio will be enjoying his NFL career next year while all his teammates are playing XFL ball, LOL. Sergio was a great kicker in the CFL, decent kicker in the XFL. I think he was like four of nine or five of nine. Great kicker in the CFL. Um, does he have the staying power to say in, in the NFL? We'll see about that. On the discussions begin about the St. Louis Battlehawks, Vargas says, I wonder if the Battlehawks would or could ever be the only NFL XFL team to be publicly owned by St. Louis. I don't think they're doing that. I think they're keeping the same business model, which is the XFL owns everything, so don't worry about that. James says, we need a team in Miami. Okay, okay, okay. Teams in Miami. No, the Dolphins don't draw well. You already have a team in Florida. Ain't going to happen, my friend. Just be a Vipers fan. That's all. You got Vipers. Some places don't have anything, okay? So be, be, be thankful that you got an XFL team in your state. On to the YouTube's channel. We got, uh, let's see here. Kareem says, can't wait for this. I was a big XFL fan. Patrick says, I will definitely continue to support the league. That is good. This is from our last podcast. Paladin says, to clarify my comments, since the Sprig League starts on the week of Halloween, I feel it's a missed opportunity to play up the holiday festivals at the most opening week to play up the Spooky League holiday gimmicks. Still the same initials, so easily revert back to the original name. Even have a temporary holiday logo. I they just need to get this thing going, the Spring League. It's going to be really interesting. We're all very anxious to see how this Spring League turns out. Paul H. says, nah. Patrick says, for the love of football, let this league be successful. I agree with that. Gavin says, anyone else a D.C. Defenders fan? Me, right here. Your boy Mark, D.C. Defenders fan, Gavin. So don't worry about it. You don't need to go anywhere. And there's lots of us. Hashtag Kachel guards me, says, make Polian the commissioner and make an XFL an AAF merger. I don't think we're going to see any of that kind of stuff this year. And Elf of Courage, the nice name, says, I didn't even know this league existed. Never heard a thing about it. Talking about the Spring League. Lots of comments on our Twitter. I can't get through them. I'm going to probably start doing hashtag uh, XFLWIR if there's anybody that wants to make a comment 
on the Twitters because we just got so much stuff going flying on about the Spring League coming up. That's the main thing that's been going on. So stay tuned with XFL News Hub about the Spring League. On to our social media stuff, or uh, I should say our emails from fans. Charlie says, hello, how many people I know? Hello. Many people I know like football, but hate watching everything except NFL Red Zone because of the frequent number of commercial breaks. Remember, the XFL tried to bring that down. I think the XFL has a phenomenal opportunity to differentiate itself and gain market share for football viewerships by limiting, if not eliminating, limiting, if not eliminating commercials. You can have the game broadcast bordered with advertisements, have ads on jerseys, have the announcers say ads, etc. Just don't break up the flow of the game and people will watch. If the networks won't allow it, then broadcast straight to the internet. They did cut down a lot of that commercial breaks, but I hear what you're saying. Taking this approach would revolutionize the game for the better and bring back a previous lost audience. This would bring back a pace and flow that the game was originally meant to have. Thank you for considering my suggestion. Remember, they did. every game is under three hours, which means you had to cut out the commercials, you had to cut out the halftime. So it's all good there. We got an email about kneeling. We skipped over that one. And Cynthia brought up a point. Says San Antonio has been hoping for and waiting for a real consistent professional football team, a league to come to San Antonio, Texas. And she says, please consider San Antonio. And if the new owner is considering having a cheerleader, then hire Cynthia. What about cheerleaders, which is an interesting idea. Do you think the new XFL should bring back cheerleaders. That was something the original XFL said, heck no. It kind of had this bad vibe to it back in the day when the first iteration, now you have the second iteration. Would cheerleaders, I, I doubt you would see cheerleaders. Again, it's another group of people that you have to pay. At least just the, you know, that's just another ex- added expense I don't think they would do. But would you be interested in cheerleaders returning to the XFL? All right, that's it for this week's social media stuff. All right, it's been a pretty quiet week. We expect some things to crank up over the next couple months as we get closer to 2020 kickoff, but really things will start to crank up in June. If you want to be part of the show, just remember your email podcast at XFL News Hub or call 888-430-7692, extension 3. Follow us everybody on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, especially. Follow us on YouTube. Like and subscribe there. you got our apps. You can download that. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate all that stuff. Plus, you can listen to us anywhere in the podcast. Universe show notes, xflnewshub.com slash xfl-podcast. Join our Discord. It's in the show notes. Lots of fans joining that up, talking Fantasy XFL, talking about what's going on there. So if you want to join the chat and join the community, that's the spot to do it. Working on that Fantasy app. Yes, that's still going on. We'll have a beta hopefully by the end of the year. That's something similar to what we're trying to do. So you'll check that out. We have so much more planned. Thank goodness there's no XFL games. I mean, I wish there was, but with everything going on, it makes sense that they're not doing it. But I'm really excited about this gives us more time to get things rolling, too. So thanks for listening. Mahalo. Stay safe out there. Go out and vote this week, my friends. And I will see you all later.